Hello, everyone. I am Yvette, um, one of the training coordinators at Action for Children. I just wanted to let you know that if you do want credit for this webinar or any of the previous webinars, can you please um, add your gateways number in the comments section or in the question section? Um, and that is located on the left hand, uh, on the right hand side of your screen. I will hand this over to Lavetter, and you are Hi, this is Lavetta Terry. Um, thank you so much, Yvette, for that introduction and for reminding our participants um, about their gateway number. Um, again, my name is Lavetta Terry, and you are at the Peer Learning for Leaders Single and Multi Site Programs webinar. We're going to talk and focus today on the request for proposals that was um, put out by the City of Chicago. And I think everybody's pretty clear that those proposals are due May 15th at 12 o'clock. There are two documents with that proposal, um, with that RFP that I'm quite sure everyone has a copy of. Um, the first document talks about the Chicago Early Learning Community-Based Program, and it gives a table of contents. It goes into organizational background, program description, program requirements, submission guidance for applicants, performance measures, contract management, terms of your contract, eligible respondents, selection criteria, your evaluation process, the proposal for the webinar, e-procurement, how you're going to upload your, your document to the city, your grant and budget information, everything that you need to make a successful, to submit a successful RFP is included in that document. There's also an amendment to that RFP um, from Department of Family Support Services uh, to request for proposals. It's the same RFP, but it says amendment number two. Basically, that amendment is talking about uh, responding to questions that came in from the field about the RFP. There were some things in RFP that people were um, trying to interpret, but they may have been interpreting it incorrectly. So that second document, which is about a 40 page document, um, it answers um, questions that people were asking so they can have clarity about the original RF RFP. So there's many things to consider with an RFP. Um, I know that most of you, if not all of you, have begun to look at the document, begin to, to digest the information that's in there so that you can really make sure that you're answering the document in a clear, concise way, and so that the people um, that are reading the proposals and making the decisions about the grants that are going to be awarded are clear about what you're trying to do. Our topic, again, is peer learning for leaders, single and multi-site programs. I really like this slide. It's a lot of question marks in this slide. It says generate your questions throughout the webinar and we will respond from guidance from the City of Chicago Children's Services Division. It's so important that as you really dive into the RFP and that you start to respond to the different content areas that you ask your questions so that you're clear. The RFP has an addendum as we just talked about that gives you additional information for clarity, but there still be, might be some things that you have in mind. The wonderful thing about asking questions is that not only um, you probably have that questions, but your colleagues probably also have the same questions. And our format with putting it back to you guys in FAQ format for everybody who attended a webinar will allow all of your answers, your questions rather, I'm sorry, to be answered. So let's just take a few minutes right now. You might have already have some questions. Please feel free to uh, note them in the chat box. The other day, someone asked me a question and they said, Lavetta, do you know what W-I-I-F-N means? 
And I thought about it and I said, W-I-I-F-M. I have no idea what that means. Um, and the person said to me, that means what's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? So when you think about this RFP, it gives us a wonderful opportunity um, to become a delegate with this city, with the Department of Children and Family Services, to continue to provide service for children and families in the city of Chicago, and to even expand your services if that is one of your goals. So W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for you? What's in it for me? It's a wonderful opportunity to continue to provide service and to expand your services wherever possible. It's important to ask questions as this question mark slide shows us. Um, it's important to continue to ask questions so that you make sure that you understand fully what is required and so that you get it right. Requests for proposals, the RFP. Some people feel like, oh my goodness, it's so much. It can be a bit overwhelming and it can be, but once you start, how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. The same thing with the RFP. You tackle it piece by piece by piece. There's some things, <clears throat> there's some things to consider when you're writing your RFP. Today is already May 7th. We know the RFP is due on the 15th of the month, which is right around the corner, 15th of May at 12 o'clock. It's so important that you read the requirements in RFP and determine how you would dissect each of the elements and who would be part of the process. We talked about how to eat that elephant one bite at a time. Same thing for the RFP. Review it, dissect the con contents and the components of the RFP and who will be part of your process. Most of you probably have already started about thinking about this and more importantly, have started this process. Think about who are your content experts. These are the people who know your program and they know your policies and they know your procedures. They know the specifics and they can talk about that and document that. Who are the writers of your RFP? Figure that out. You might have people that really know the content of your organization and the work, the wonderful work that you're doing, but they may not be the best writers or vice versa. So you wanna make sure that your process includes those people around the table that are expert at what they do so they can all pull together as a team and make sure that you're submitting the best RFP possible for your organization. What are the timelines for each person's piece? It's so important that you communicate, communicate, communicate. Make sure that everyone on your team and even more importantly, everyone in your organization has an understanding that you're submitting a proposal. What kind of things are gonna stay the same? What changes are you proposing? What expansions are you considering? Are you requesting from the city of Chicago? Communication is the key. And sometimes when we're really busy, we forget that piece. And then people feel left out of the loop. The last thing you want is for anybody in your organization to, to feel not connected. Communication will ensure that everyone is connected. With every process with writing RFP, you're gonna have some people that have you've given an assignment to, but they might be struggling. They might be stuck and that's okay and that's normal. So it's important that you're in tune with your people on your team and that you identify if there's someone who's having trouble and you help them to get unstuck, so to speak, so that you can move forward. All of your processes should include a timeline. And I'm strongly suggesting that it would be wonderful if people can have their deadline for the proposal instead of May 15th might be May 13th or at a minimum May 14th, because things do happen. So you wanna make sure you give yourself enough room to breathe, enough room to make corrections, enough room to make changes if needed. You don't want the pressure of the morning of the 15th and you're not ready and not prepared to submit your proposal. In your proposal, you wanna be clear and detailed and make sure you consider the technical piece. Understand that they're uploading a proposal to the department. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to consider your connections. If you have a slow connection or a dial up, it's gonna take much longer. You have to really make sure that you give yourself ample time 
that it's uploaded because it's my understanding that that is the deadline and there's no exceptions and, and no excuses will be um, accepted. Um, can someone mute their line? I can hear people talking. Thank you. So make, make sure that you're in your process, you've included that technical piece. Um, good proposals also lead to better working relationships. We talked about communication. When everyone in your team has an understanding of the process and the changes and things that are going to stay the same, it just it just forces a stronger team. People feel connected. People know that we're all working together towards the same goal. We all have people that worked hard on RFP together um, so that everybody has an understanding of each person's role. And even though everybody has a specific role, we're not silos, so it's so important that we see how our role affects another person's role and how it all flows together. And thinking of that, that should also be clear when someone, the reader, is reading your proposal, that they see the continuity of thought, they see the continuity of programs, and how all of the content areas sort of flow together to make your program a strong program that it is. Another suggestion, it's important to document any internal issues and what your plan is to tackle them. No program is 100% perfect. All of us, all programs have things that we can work on, then things we need to improve. It's good to recognize that. It's good to say, these are some things that we're working on to improve and to document your plan for that. It's good not only for your RFP, but it's good for your organization because it's showing growth, it's showing change and change is inevitable. We always wanna get better. We always wanna improve. Challenges that you're encountering, make sure you communicate that. Not only in your RFP, but with your team so that people understand this is what the things we're working on. These are the things we're doing well, but these are the things we're working on. And these are the things we're gonna address. We're not gonna ignore them. Um, when you ignore things, that doesn't show leadership. Leaders are able to communicate their strengths and their weaknesses, and they have a plan for that. Let's take a minute and, and maybe a couple of minutes and write in any questions that you have at this point. Good. Hopefully you submitted some wonderful questions and that we'll make sure, as we said earlier, that we respond to them and get them back to everyone on this RFP. I mean, on this webinar, I'm sorry. All right, let's take a look at this slide. Oh, you know what, before I'm gonna go back for a second. Um, Uh, you know, it's okay. I think I did cover that already. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let's take a look at this slide. It's a wonderful, wonderful image of a quality child development program classroom. You have your wonderful teacher. You have all your beautiful, smart, curious, inquisitive children. Look at how well designed the classroom is, the different areas, how well it's set up. This photo serves different purposes for me and hopefully for you. This photo reminds me of why we got into this field to begin with. Most of us in the child development field had hopes and dreams. We wanted to make sure that we um, changed the world and we did that through making sure that we had quality services for our children and families. And so sometimes we just need to take a minute and reflect, why are we doing what we're doing? I know we can get caught up in all the work that we have to do. Our to-do lists are longer than we are. 
And sometimes our to-do list spills into the next day and even the next week. And we don't always get to everything that we, we want to do. But when you take a minute and reflect and you look at this image and you, you're reminded gently of why we do what we do, we do really good work for the children and families in the city of Chicago. We're making a difference. Children's lives are so impactful from the time they're in their mother's womb up until age five. And then it continues. But if you can get a child around the ages that we're dealing with children and be impactful in their lives and show them that we love them and we care and that they're smart and they're capable, it's a really good thing. And it makes us all feel great. There's so many good conclusions that we can draw from this slide. And sometimes you just need to have a picture like this around or just walk through your classrooms of your own beautiful children that you serve and remind yourself of why you do the work that you do. It's bigger than any of us. We all want to provide excellent child development services to our children and to the families. The city of Chicago is committed to high quality early learning through a citywide system of school and community-based programs known as Chicago Early Learning. The city has engaged in two major shifts to facilitate access and to improve the quality of early learning services in the city of Chicago. These shifts are pivotal to strong city systems. The city has been working on this shift for quite a while with the ultimate goal is making sure that every child is kindergarten ready. The city of Chicago has made a commitment to provide children across the city with access to high quality early learning through a comprehensive citywide system of school and community-based programs known as Chicago Early Learning or CEL, C-E-L. You will hear often people refer to CEL programs, which is Chicago Early Learning. The city has engaged in two shifts as we just talked about. One, the consolidation of funding for community-based early learning programs under the Chicago Department of Family Support Services in 2017 was aimed to provide more cohesive, cost-effective administration of Chicago's funding for high-quality early childhood educational programming outside of schools. The second, with the implementation of the consolidated funding model, the city of Chicago is able to make investments in birth to five system while scaling full day programming for four year olds to deliver universal pre K in both school and community based settings. What is all of this saying? The city has been looking for a couple of years to try to make sure that we streamline and our costs and be effective, but also at the same time providing high quality child development services to our children and families. That has been a major focus and a major shift. And it's taken the city a couple of years. So that just shows you how much time has been put into that effort and how important the goals were. <laughs> Take a look at this slide. This is the city of Chicago community areas and as they call them, their sides, Chicago sides. So we have the far north side, northwest side, north side, west side, central, south side, southwest side, far west side, and far southeast side. So this comprises the city of Chicago. And as you can see, each of these community areas are color-coded and numbered. Where are you on this slide? Where is your organization on this slide? Where are the children and families that you serve? What communities are you in? Take a moment, find where you are.
I hope you know where you are. This slide is important for many reasons. When you do your RFP, and I'm quite sure most of you, if not all, have your community needs assessment where you have documented the statistics, the demographics, the geographic areas that you are serving. You've documented what your community looks like, educational levels, racial, the ethnicities of families that live in your communities. And if you haven't done that, that definitely needs to be a part of your RFP because you have to know your community. Think about your area and what other programs and services are in your community that you are serving. You may or may not be the only child development program in that community or the only child care facility. I strongly suggest you ride along, ride around, look around, walk around your community. Don't overlook any possibilities. Sometimes we're so used to where we work or where we live uh, and we think we know, but things change. Become one with your community if you're not already. Ride around, take your time, walk around. Any new stores, any new facilities, any new partnership possibilities. There might be services in your community that you could partner with that would make your program, your organization stronger. The other thing that would be wonderful is that if you have already partnerships or you're developing new partnerships, to have a letter of agreement or a letter of support from that other organization or other community uh, service provider that you're in partnership with them. That will show any reader that's looking at your RFP and what you've submitted, how committed you are to your community. I know you're committed to the community because of the children and families you serve, but you also want to show that you're committed beyond just your children and families. Because whatever services are in your communities that you're serving, your children and families might be a part of those services as well. As well. So a strong partnership is going to reinforce the good work that not only you're doing, but other organizations in the community are doing. So if I look at this community area, City of Chicago map, what color are you? Where do you fall? not just what where you're currently providing service, but let's say you decided in your RFP that you want to expand. You might be in community number 16, and which is the Northwest side. And you might say, you know what? I'm going to start, I'm going to provide service in community area 14, which is the far North side. But you don't know a lot about the far North side. So you're really going to have to make sure you look at the census information. I know that um, the Department of City uh, of Chicago has some type of link where they were showing it at that Truman Cells conference um, where you can put in information and it gives you a wealth of statistics um, so that you can learn at least in terms of the paper trail about the community um, before you ride around and find out more about the, the community. I encourage you to talk to people. The weather's slowly getting nicer walk around, talk to people, get to know people, and have them get to know you. Sometimes we think we know our communities, but we might be missing something. And there's something refreshing when you just spend time not working on your to-do list, not providing service, but just getting to know your community. The goal of this RFP, Chicago children being ready to succeed in kindergarten is the most immediate outcome we have for children who have participated in Chicago early learning programs. And we are looking forward to their success. Our immediate goal is for children to succeed in kindergarten. The goal of this RFP, there's several, to enhance and expand highly effective services to vulnerable families with children ages birth to five, 
another goal for children for Chicago early learning so community based programs to provide early learning experiences that support children's development based on their individual trajectory across four developmental domains social emotional physical language and cognitive with the goal of supporting their success in school and in life to build a system that allows us to work together towards a clearly articulated goal of having more of our children enter kindergarten ready to succeed the last thing we want is for a child to be going to kindergarten and they're not ready for kindergarten being ready to succeed in kindergarten is the most immediate outcome we have for our children who have participated in the Chicago Early Learning Programs. Based on the desired outcome for children to be on track and ready for kindergarten, this request for a proposal, this RFP, aims to achieve the following four goals. Number one, deliver high quality learning environments and experiences that promote children's growth, development, and kindergarten readiness across four developmental domains, social, emotional, physical, language, and cognitive. Number two, Engage and support families by providing them with meaningful ways to interact with their children's learning and development and attain their own personal goals. Number three, provide programs with the foundation and supports necessary for strong program design management and monitoring systems that contribute to sustained quality programming. Number four, employ a professionally prepared and adequately compensated workforce to achieve the desired outcomes for children and their families. In a nutshell, we want your RFP to show that you're providing high quality learning environments and experiences for the children. Experiences that are gonna promote their growth and development. Experiences that are gonna make them kindergarten ready experiences that cross the four developmental domains that we talked about, social, emotional, physical, language, and cognitive. This should be reflected in your RFP. You should be documenting how you're gonna achieve that particular goal. The other goal we talked about was engaging and supporting families. Families are the children's first teacher. It's important that the children see the adults, their parents, and the staff working together in concert to support them being kindergarten readiness. In that process, not only are we helping the children's learning and development, we're also going to help the parent attain some of their personal goals. Your RFP should show that you have a program with a foundation that supports strong design management and monitoring systems that contributes to quality programming. You could have the best program in the world, but if you're not monitoring, if you don't have systems of monitoring, you have no way of supporting or documenting the good work that you do. So the proposal wants to make sure that they see what's your program design management and what's your monitoring system to, for that program. How are you gonna achieve sustained quality within your program? The fourth goal, employ a professionally prepared and adequately compensated workforce to achieve the desired outcomes we have for our children and our families. So we wanna make sure that in your proposal, you're documenting that your staff are qualified, what makes them qualified. You're documenting what roles they're gonna play, what is the responsibilities within those roles. The reader of your proposal should be able to read your proposal. You won't be present and they should be able to understand the good quality work that you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. 
Let's take a minute and list any questions that you have at this point. Funding streams. Chicago early learning programs are built on two funding streams, the federal Heart Start, Head Start funding and state early childhood block grant, along with their associated requirements. So let's talk a little bit about each of these funding streams. The federal Head Start programs include Head Start for three to five-year-olds, Early Head Start for children birth to three-year-olds and pregnant women, and Early Head Start Child Care Partnership programs for children birth to three. The other funding stream is Early Childhood Black Grant, which includes Preschool for All, or some people say PFA, which are for three to five-year-olds, and Prevention Initiative, or PI, which is for children from birth to three-year-olds and pregnant women. The opportunity to blend federal and state funding and center-based programs will support the implementation of quality components and help programs serve families with the greatest need, while reducing the eligibility barrier relying on state childcare funding. So the combination of these funding streams just gives us all more flexibility. Type in your questions if you have any about funding streams. All right, thank you for those who are submitting questions. We are appreciative of that. Let's take a look at this slide. I like this slide. Um, I'm a visual person as well. And so images just bring things to my memory and to my thoughts. So in this slide, you have money surrounded by a heart. And in the heart space are the words. The only wealth in this world is children. Sorry about that extra N. <laughs> but the only wealth in this world is children. It's such a true statement. So while we're writing this proposal, because we want to continue with our current funding situation and or you want to expand the services you're currently providing, we're doing all this as we showed in that image earlier with the children in that wonderful quality child development program. We're doing all this for our children. Smart people understand that the only wealth is in our children in this world is our children. It's such an important thing to invest in our children. They give them the best opportunities. And we're doing our part so that they can go to kindergarten and be ready. There's several types and service delivery models. We have center-based care. We have charter schools slash private schools. We have family child care homes. We have home-based slash home visiting. Those are our program types and service delivery models. 
which each of these program types and service delivery models, there's come some specifics and some requirements. So let's go through each one. Center-based care. Center-based care, early childhood education and care, offered in Illinois state licensed facility with separate classrooms or areas for distinct age groups from birth through five years of age. Its comprehensive services offered include in family engagement, health and nutrition. This type of service delivery model occurs at the center. Now, some of the things that I'm gonna be sharing with you, they're, they're not before you, but they're in your RFP. So don't be as concerned. There's lots of descriptions in your RFP. Charter schools slash private schools. Early childhood education offered at Illinois licensed exempt facility with separate classrooms or areas for distinct preschool groups. Comprehensive services offered include family engagement, health, and nutrition. This type of service delivery model occurs at the school setting. Charter schools or private schools, which are seeking to align their pre-K programming with their school charter or elementary school funding authorized by Chicago Public Schools. Family child care homes. It's early childhood education and care. It's offered at Illinois licensed homes for children birth to five, with comprehensive services offered, including family engagement, health, and nutrition. The service delivery occurs in the licensed child care home. Department of Family and Support Services supports family child care homes through networks established with Head Start or Early Head Start delegate agencies. Individual family child care homes should seek becoming a part of a network that meets the specific community needs. Home base or home visiting. Early childhood development programs, working with parents to support them in understanding child development and their role as a parent, using one of the Department of Family Support Services approved evidence-based models for implementation. In addition, the programs work with parents to facilitate parents' ability to set and achieve goals for themselves and focus on their own development. Comprehensive services are offered. The service delivery is mostly in the parent's home, except for socializations and parent meetings. So it's four different type program types and service delivery models, all with the goal to ultimately help that child transition through their ages to be kindergarten ready. In all of these situations, the programs and the family child care homes are licensed. And each of these programs has a, a slightly different um, intent. As we mentioned in the home base, home visiting, we're focusing more on the parents. That was a pretty big section, so please take a minute or two and type in your questions. Thank you for your questions. 
Eight serve and program models. The Chicago Early Learning Programs may be provided through a variety of options that include center-based care, licensed family child care homes, which is Head Start, Early Head Start funding only, and home-based home visiting programs. For this RFP or request for proposal, applicants must submit separate applications for category A, which is birth to three-year-olds, and category B, three and four-year-olds. No more than one proposal should be submitted for each category. Agencies are not required to apply for both category A and B for consideration. So what is that saying? You can submit one proposal for category A and one proposal for category B. However, you can also submit a proposal for category A and B. Let's talk a little bit about this slide. So in category A, which is birth to three-year-olds, this is the program options. Category A, birth to three, it's preventive initiative or PI. The service delivery is center-based or home-based. The funding is prevention initiative or early head start, or it can be early head start child care partnership. The service delivery models can be center-based, home-based, family child care homes. Category B. This is for three and four-year-olds. The funding is Preschool for All or PFA and or Head Start. The service delivery models for Preschool for All is center-based, charter schools or private schools. For Head Start, it's center-based, charter schools, private schools, home base or home visiting, and family child care homes. So with your RFP, it's two categories. Category A, you're dealing with birth to three. Category B, you're dealing with three to four year olds. Type in your questions that in reference to age served and program models. Thank you for your questions. Let's take a look at this slide. I'm not a fan of Bruce Lee. I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably impartial. Um, however, I do uh, find his this saying, his this quote from him, interesting. And so, what is it saying? It's saying, "Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough." We must do. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. What am I trying to say here? We know, I know that you know your programs. We know that you do good child development quality services for your children and families. We know everything is required. But this knowing is not enough. In this RFP, it's so important that you document all the good work that you do. 
Detail is important. Make sure that you give yourself credit for what you do and the things that you do well. Make sure that the person reading your proposal understands your systems and your policies and your procedures and how you are able to accomplish. It's one thing to know it, it's another thing to apply it. So in this RFP, they're gonna be looking at how are you gonna apply the things that you said you're gonna do. Willing is not enough. We must do. So we are willing to provide the service. We are willing to write this proposal, but we have to do it. Some of us may be procrastinators. We all know how time escapes us. Sometimes you think you have more time than what you have. May 15th is right around the corner. So if you haven't started already, I suggest when this webinar is over, that you spend time thinking about what you need to do, writing down the steps, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute, and going through your process, pulling in the people that you need to be a part of the process, the people on your team, the people who have the content information, the people who are gonna be the writers. It's so important that you have somebody proofread because you wanna make sure, it's one thing when you're writing or you know it, but you gotta make sure that the person reading it has a full, strong understanding of what you're trying to communicate. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. You know what, let's um, take a moment and if people can just write in uh, where you are in the RFP process, just something really brief. If you've already started or you haven't started yet or you got your team to get, just write down the next minute where you are in the RFP process. With only eight days left to accomplish it. Thank you for that. Performance measures. Design and implement learning environments and practices that support children's development across four developmental domains that have been identified as key to children's social, I'm sorry, to children's kindergarten readiness. Social, emotional, physical, language, and cognitive. These are things that should be included in your proposal, how your performance will be measured through the work of your children. Agencies must have an average composite score of 4.5 across the class. Eckers, FCCRS, and ITERS assessments with no single classroom falling below a score of four. Site leaders participate in the site-based instructional coaching model sessions. And site leaders who participated in site-based instructional coaching demonstrate implementation of coaching indicators outlined by the instructional support service providers. So basically the, the, the readers of the RFP wanna know how you're addressing all of these, these areas so that your children can be kindergarten ready. Additional performance measures, design and implement programs that support families and provide them meaningful ways to interact with their children's learning and development and promotes home school connection. We said earlier that the parent is the child's first teacher. How are you gonna keep that connection between you and the parents strong? Parent education curriculum implemented with validity. They have the parents as teachers or baby talk curriculum. At least 80% of all families who enter the program during the year are still enrolled at the end of the program year. 
it's important that you're tracking the families that enroll with you at the beginning of the year and what percentage of those families are still with you. Center base of Family Childcare Home, Teaching Strategies Gold Parent Portal is utilized on a regular basis. Your RFP wants you to address that. Additional performance measures. Design and implement a program management and monitoring infrastructure that fully supports quality learning environments and parent and family engagement. Overall average score of 5.0 or higher on the program administration scale or the PAS. Parent and staff satisfaction survey demonstrates 85% overall satisfaction and demonstrates growth in areas from previous years. Program's baseline information on the five E's survey that assess effective leaders, collaborative teachers, involved families, supportive environment, and ambition, ambitious instruction. Measures on improved, reduced staff turnover rate. The reader of the proposal wants to see what are you doing to improve your turnover rate and how, and how you have reduced it. What is your plan? What actions are you putting into place so that those performance measures are met? Take a moment and, and ask your questions at this time. Thank you for your questions. Time for action. This slide can't be any more clear. <laughs> for those who have started working on their proposal, you need to consistently continue to work on it for completion. Make sure that you consider some of the things that we've been talking about on this webinar. Make sure that you're communicating clearly to the reader what your systems are, how are you managing your programs, how are you reviewing your performance measures. It's time for action. You don't have as much time as you think, no matter what you're working on. What are your next steps? Earlier, I asked you guys to write in where you are in your RFP process, and we'll take a look at those responses. One, you want to identify what your next steps are. In most cases, I'm quite sure most of you have done that already. But if you haven't, you need to do so. Number two, make, step, make sure your steps are clear to your team. We talked earlier about communication, communication, communication. You don't want to be one or just two or three people that know what's involved in RFP, to know what you currently are doing, to know what your plans are for expansion, if any. Make sure all your steps about the process is communicated clearly. Let your team, let your staff know where you are in the RFP process. Communication is key. Determine who is responsible for each piece of the process. We talked earlier that you have some people who work with you that are excellent writers. 
they should be doing the writing. You have some people that are great proofreaders. They should be doing the proofreading. You have some people that are expert in different content areas. They should be at the table communicating what has to absolutely be included in that portion of the RFP. How are you going to document your performance measures? How are you going to make sure that your management systems are clearly written and that the, what's written is what's being done? Those people need to be at the table. Determine who is responsible for each piece. Think of, your, think of your budget and how it's related to your research and your plan to operate your program. So you need to look at your program and the things that you say you're going to accomplish and how does that connect or mesh with your budget, especially in those cases where you're talking about expansion. If you want to add another um, early Head Start class, for example, um, there's costs involved. What is the cost of the additional staff? What is the cost to set up the classroom? What is the cost to get your equipment and supplies that's required? Is there going to be additional uh, rent fees or lease fees because you're adding another room because you're taking up more space in wherever you are? All those things should be considered. Your fiscal piece and your program piece has to coincide and it has to be like a good marriage. Throughout the process, Always think of qualifications. Everything you're writing, do you have the right people in place? Are your teachers qualified? Is your education coordinator has the right background? Are all of the people that's involved in this organization qualified to do the work that they do? How's your board? Do you have some level of expertise in each of your board people that support and complement? your organization and, and the services that you're providing. Always think of qualifications. Some people might have additional questions after this webinar is completed. Please send those questions to Dorothy Turner and you see her email address on the slide. Dorothy.Turner at actionforchildren.org. As I said earlier, all your questions will be gathered and responded to in an FAQ format. And the answers shared with everyone who was on this webinar. So be looking out for future correspondence. This is a slide that talks about registry for future webinars. Of course, we just had the one today. I'm not sure about if we're going to have the one tomorrow. We'll double check. Um, but you can always go back and, and, and hopefully we have these recorded and you will be able to listen. So check your emails for future webinars and FAQs. This is my little plea to you guys. We need your support, so please take the time to complete the survey that you will receive once this webinar is finished. This, this, your survey and your feedback is so important. It helps us to know how the things that we did well and the things that we need to do better. We know you guys are busy, but we appreciate you taking the time. And thank you so much for all that you do for the children and families in the city of Chicago. You do good work, and we so appreciate all of you. Again, my name is Lavetta A. Terry. I'm with the Terry Consulting Group. I also do consulting work for Illinois Action for Children. Um, I like this line that I wrote. We all care about children and our actions show we care. So just make sure that you just have a great blessed day and that your actions show that you care. We wish you all much success with your RFP and your submission. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for your participation. The webinar is officially over.
better, I'm going to give you a call. I'm going to turn off the webinar now. Okay, thanks. Okay. And